Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Perry Richardson from Striper, and you're watching Show Me Your Pick with Fruit Cake Tony. Rock on. Howdy ho, folks. What, what is happening? Show me your pick. July the 10th, 2021. Yes. Strike. Well. Yeah. 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 Well, happy, happy, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Finally stopped raining up here. Sun's oh, out. I wish it stopped raining here. Oh, we had a lot of rain, man. So. Oh, yeah. We're probably getting what you had before. Yeah. Yeah, it'll stop. Believe me, it was, it was wet. I saw New York City subways where like someone was pouring like a hose down them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that happens. <laughs> All right, good to see everybody. Good to Charles, see you. Tom, yeah, CK, C Analog, CK, T Cake. I was away for two weeks. I'm happy to be back. Nice to see you back, bro. Yeah, man. Brother. Missed you, dude. Missed you. you. Look yeah, way missed too you rested, brother. Way too rested. Look at that. I don't know about that, but you know. <laughs> but I missed I missed you guys. It's good All to see right. You, Let let's take care of a couple of things before we we get going. We got a special guest here. Nice. In, the, in the green room. I'm excited. All nice. right. So First of all, Brendan oh. B. Squared Handcrafts Custom Cigar Box Guitars. Yeah. That was and his links are down below. I have one right here. And I'm more behind me. Cool, man. So, yeah. So cool, Brendan. And he will custom make you one to your specs. Hit him up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right, so let's see what else have we got here. All righty. Well, if I can find it, <laughs> if I can find it, where is it at? Here it is. All right, so those of you with tattoos ink the original essential tattoo care high grade formulas with organic ingredients to hydrate and protect environment and reef safe fight the fade yep ink the original right nice. there yeah um who we got in the chat b let's take a look we got we've got Chris Sawa. We have, hey, Chris. we have Dan of New Jersey. Dan. Tea Dan. cakes in there, of course. Half face, half face. John Moronic, Lenny Lou, and Mary. Lenny. Hey, Lenny. Uh, Nelson Rodriguez. Uh, Nelson. We got Rick Hefner. I know people are popping in and out. Dan of New Jersey, if I didn't say that already. Um, yeah, so people are coming in. Slowly but surely. We'll recognize them as they show yep. up. Nice yeah. nice to see everybody. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Yep. All right. So um 
I am stoked as I can be to bring in our special guest. Um, we're going to send Analog Kid out to hang out with you guys in the chat. So make a little room out there, guys and girls. He's coming your way. Take yeah. care, Analog. Be cool, bro. Give him hell out there. All righty. Joseph Harpcat just joined. I can't say the last name. At, uh, I'm not even going to try it. J H E. Close enough. All right. So, our special guest, let's bring him in. Um, he is the current bass player in Striper. He's the original bass player, founding member of firehouse yes. um oh yeah he he he's local to to me and charles here in the carolinas um let's give a warm welcome ladies and gentlemen mr perry richardson yeah, there What's he up? is hey, right on, bro. oh yeah how y'all doing good perry what's happening fantastic uh, well, first of all, your two sponsors. I need a cigar box guitar, and I need <laughs> the, the ink stuff. So oh, I got we'll you talk, covered. We'll talk I got to you about covered, that later. I, I, I even I even made a cigar box base, man. So <laughs> no so, way. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk um, we'll talk later, buddy. All right. I got you. I got you covered. Oh Excellent. my god, I love that. Thanks. So, how's everybody doing? Excellent, Perry. Oh, nice to have you. you. Welcome. Perry, well, it's such a pleasure to meet you, my man. Super hey, excited. Thanks, oh, thanks God. You know, yeah. uh, in, uh, in early, it was uh, September or October of 1990, just before, just, I, it was around Halloween, and I was walking into a liquor store in Manhattan Beach, California, and a buddy of mine, I hadn't seen him in like 10 years, his name was Dan, and he comes walking out, and we, we see each other, and the first thing out of his mouth is, not how have you been? I hadn't seen the guy in like 10 years. He didn't yeah. ask me how I'd been. He didn't ask me what I'd been doing. He looks me right in the eye, and he goes, bro, I just heard this new band. They're called Firehouse. They are <laughs> the next big thing. <laughs> Dan wasn't wrong, buddy. Uh, he wasn't wrong. And well, I told myself, if I ever get one of you guys from the band in front of me, i got to tell you that story. That's funny, man. That's cool. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm it's a glad pleasure to that. meet you, my man. Pleasure. Thank to meet you, you very much. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here, man. I, I, uh, North Carolina. I mean, North Carolina is like my second home. I, you know, I probably spent more time there in the '80s and part of the early '90s, and I did in South Carolina. So, wow. yeah, it's a, we had a good time up there. I was listening right. to Tony earlier talking about the early club days around here. So I was on the West Coast when you guys were here. Right. And, uh, yeah. God, some of the stories are awesome, man. Uh, it was, it was, it'll never be like that again, man. It no. was so cool. It was oh, so that's good. good. That's good. Yeah. Nantucket, Mother's yeah. Friend, Max man. Warrior. Um, it's hard, hard to beat. I mean, God, there's some good bands from around here. It was crazy. Yeah. It yeah. was a big rock scene here in North Carolina in the yep. 80s. And a lot it of was, clubs, man. too. Tons well, of them. Yeah. Thanks for sharing them with us, you know, finally. Because, you know, up here in New York and everywhere else, you're like, hey, you stop <laughs> hogging them all. Set them well, free. Um, you know? <laughs> Although we had, we, had our own, we had our own in New York, too. But, you know, you got to share. sure you did. Yeah. With those types of bands, um, and you spent time in Nantucket too, with with clubs like the 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 Magic Attic and the Mad Monk, um, yeah. couple in Myrtle Beach, Electric um, Circus, Electric, Electric Circus, and uh, Castaways. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh God, Castaways was awesome. We had. <laughs> That was like the first place I ever played here, and it was it was amazing. So, while um, you guys are in Max Warrior, how'd you meet B 
Bill and Michael? Uh, we we crossed paths on the club scene. I think we did some shows together. Like, I think I remember playing with them one night in Richmond at some club in Richmond, and uh, so we kept passing them, passing them on the road, and uh, th that's how we met. I mean, I saw saw those guys play, and I was like, man. <laughs> We need that. Uh, we need that guitar player and drummer. So it just worked out. You know, later on when everybody Max Warrior broke up and took a couple of years off, when I, that's when I went to Nantucket. And uh, so in that time, right after I think it was early eighty nine, eight no eighty late eighty eight, when we uh, pulled everybody together and started that, started the firehouse thing. Yeah. And got signed in that yep. debut album is awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean that that had a lot, a lot to do with with North Carolina in general and in Myrtle Beach in particular in South Carolina because we gave when we did a demo in '89. And uh, we came back from, uh, we did it out in LA. And we came back and we gave one song to a station in Charlotte and uh, one song to a station in Myrtle Beach. And it went to number one at both stations. And just people were freaking out over it. And that got the attention of all the record labels because at that time, like all the major labels had local reps that were based out of Charlotte and they heard what was going on. So they call New York and say, you need to get down here and see this band. So that's how it all happened, you know, because of people calling in and, and liking the stuff they heard on the radio, you know? And yeah. Not to, not to quote your band, but, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> that was. All she wrote. <laughs> that was. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, amazing and, stuff. And after the album comes out and you guys go out on the road, I, I saw you guys, I want to say 91 or 92 with Warrant on, on their tour, um, Trickster on that yeah. bill too. Yeah, that was our first big arena tour. That was in 91. Yep. Wow. Nice. Yeah. You guys toured with everybody. <laughs> hey, that tour won. Uh, Metal Edge Tour of the Year that year. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. That was so cool, man. Yeah, it must great. have been fun as hell. It was, man. We learned a lot, and uh, we uh, became great friends with both of those bands, and they taught us a lot of stuff that we didn't know, man. We were green. We didn't know at that level. I mean, we played clubs forever. We knew sure. that. But uh, yeah. it's got being be out on the road with buses and Freaking okay. dealing with all that stuff, setting up for Coliseum stuff, man. It was night and day from what we were used to. You know, it's a lot. But then you had other so people, many people setting up involved. Your stuff. You had other people setting up your stuff, right? You didn't have to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I didn't <laughs> I have thought, to load the truck. I was freaking right. out because I didn't have to load the truck. Right, Perry. I've got two questions for you. I just get two quick ones. First of all, right. the song "Don't Treat Me Bad" yeah. is that about a real girl? I don't. Think so? <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with right now, and that was CJ and Bill. So uh -huh. there is no telling. It okay, could have, could have, she have, the girl reminds me of an ex-girlfriend. I'm just throwing that out there. But hey, yeah. um, what was it like doing all those music videos, MTV? What was it, was it like? A, it was a blast. It was like this. It feels like a dream now, looking back on that. You know, it was. Uh, to be on MTV, I was freaking out. I mean, that, that was like the second best thing after hearing your song on the radio for the first yeah. time. And you see your video on, on sure. television, man. And we're like, but filming those things, it was terrible. I'm I mean, sure it's exhausting. It how many? All day. All day. I mean, how many yeah. takes? You probably get tired like of the song. 20 hours. Yeah. Doing let's let's do it again. Over. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Oh, it so doesn't sound good. Let's do it again. You should be so sick of that song. Yeah, right. Exactly. By the end of the day, you couldn't stand it. But to see it on on MTV was, was so so amazing. Man, that was some that was some good times. It's yeah. Definitely, MTV was life changing. You know, yes. it really was.
Yeah, it was. Now, Very I've true. seen more than one um, version of Don't Treat uh, Me Bad. Don't Treat Me Bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, we did the first one in a club in, in Richmond, and the one where she's throwing the stuff out of the window. And, <laughs> uh, and I like that one a lot better than the That's other one. But favorite. That's my favorite version. Yeah, it was Sony wanted to you know they wanted to spend another 400 grand on a video so like <laughs> the song was taken off and they were like oh my god we need to jump on this and do a better video they thought it was better so that is one of yeah that may be the very best ending to a rock video period <laughs> that was that was good yeah he that was the first one take too Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was, <laughs> For the strat's sake, yes. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Let me just say before I turn it over to Brendan, um, those first, the first five albums, the first, the second, and number five, I love the most. And, and, and they are a part of... Uh, All right everybody's life who's my age who lived here in carolina in that time man um uh, that's awesome that yeah. is awesome yeah i mean i i uh i said before i think when we when tony and i met you perry was saying some of those some of those firehouse songs you know especially the ballads my wife and i were dating at the time and some you know they make all the difference you know <laughs> you're like playing you're listening you're like hey remember those songs oh yeah i remember yeah. you know so yeah. I, i've been married i've been married 28 years and we still remember just going back and saying hey i remember those songs so, oh you know, man yeah it's like a ton of people used yeah love they, of a lifetime at their wedding and oh yeah yeah that was like bride magazine's song of the year <laughs> that when it came out that year yep. so it was got, got a special you know, that, that's good did it you know special place in people. my heart yep yeah <laughs> so um in that we are you know tony was talking about all the albums and and category five you could you could kind of hear a little bit of a country vibe coming in so i'm wondering yeah. if that it was easier for you to transition from going from firehouse to to craig morgan with that or were you already doing that in your head because it's it sounded like you almost wanted to go in that direction yeah, I, I, see, I wrote, I wrote like seven songs that were yeah, on you have Capital a lot of writing, five, yeah, yeah, which I didn't particularly write a lot with the early stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, that I mean, I was wanting to take the band to a different place, mm -hmm. and I mean, I've always in the early '90s, I loved country. I, sure, man, like Diamond Rio and Little Texas and Shenandoah. Oh yeah, Little all Texas, these bands yeah. were. There's a lot of rock in everything great. you just said right there. Restless yep. Heart, you know, there were all the all the bands in early sure. '90s were amazing, and that's all that's all I was listening to at the time. Right, the great great harmonies in there. Oh, I loved it, and I love. I've always loved harmonies. I mean, I started out singing in a gospel quartet, so that's okay. Yep, my main thing's harmony, and sure, you know, bass playing came second. You know? Okay, but uh, nice. just to that's kind of where I, I wanted to do something completely different because we had already done the same thing over and over and over again, and right. I tried to push the envelope on that one and and see what we could do with it. But I've always, I mean, I was playing country. My dad played in the country band, and that's what I learned to play bass on. So it's, no, it's you know, country's yeah. in my blood. It's that was cool. an easy transition. Sure, no, it was good. I I, I was uh. I was doing my homework and listening to some stuff and I don't know if, if, if anybody else picked up on it, maybe I'm just hearing it because of both songs, but um, I got you from Craig Morgan that he sings sounds a lot like don't treat me bad at <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> if you it, later on, listen to oh, the I beginning of both of them. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, I'm like, did he do that on purpose? You know, <laughs> but I, I was no, he did not. No, he didn't it. have but, a clue. He didn't have a no. clue who I was. He never heard of Firehouse before. No, I, I, when I, did I started see, playing with him. I did see an early interview, <laughs> an early interview when how you uh, how you started with him, and that was a, that's a pretty good story. You know, yeah, you doing monitors and yeah, I know. was just filling in for the monitor. They lost their monitor guy, and I was filling in for because my best friend was playing drums for him. Right, and he talked me into going out and doing monitor sewing for a week. Yeah, which ended up being 
several months. Yeah. No. Oh, God, oh, that was awful. And then, then and I was singing, and I was singing background vocals from okay. the monitor desk. Oh, they had a microphone <laughs> on you. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's cool. That's that was awesome. funny. That's great. Nice. Oh. Super cool. Yeah, and then um, so you you played you you played with Craig twice, right? You went from Craig, and then you worked with Trace, and then you went back went to, to Trace Craig. Atkins for two years. Yeah. And, and then uh, you went back to Craig, and then went you said, back to Craig. Yeah, for another two or, said, two or three years. Craig, I got to quit again. Something else coming up. I know. I quit on him twice. <laughs> but I do remember uh, something he said in that interview, and you'll probably remember it. I mean, you you could tell the story. I guess he said something like, it's okay. You're going to a Christian band or something like that. I guess it's okay. We'll let you go or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. fantastic. Oh, my God. That's that was great. funny. Yeah. He's... <laughs> Yeah, and now Greg's a great I mean, guy, man. I had a it, yeah. It's, I mean, awesome I watched him, I watched yeah. a lot of the Grand Old Opry stuff, and I, I like that old. I like that stuff too. Um, yeah, but and then, yeah, we played the Grand Old. Great, I played the Grand Old Opry maybe probably a hundred and fifty times. Wow, that was crazy. That wow. is crazy. That's no, my dad. That's what my dad always pushed and pushed me to go into country when I was yeah. starting Max Warrior. You know, like right. this stuff sucks. Country band. It all sounds alike. Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. It's all it's the same thing. It's like no, it's not even close. Wow. Now, now that's what I'm saying. You know, like everything sounds alike now. So. <laughs> now you're going back. So now you're going back to some metal, and, and there you go. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I know Charles. I know Charles has some uh, has some questions about Striper. So I'll, I'll let him hit you up with that stuff. But yeah, yeah that that's. I mean, it's. It, just a just a great great story and a great career and, and how versatile you are and, and how many different genres you can play it's just amazing yeah. well i can't play jazz or classical so i don't I'm i bet you could i bet you could if you wanted you could if you tried you could see with jazz God. see jazz with jazz you make a mistake you just do it two or three you more can times just play it's part of the song anything. they think it's part yeah. of the song <laughs> or, so. or you just you just move up or down a half step right yeah, there you go yeah yeah Oh my god. <laughs> All right, Tommy. What you got? All right. So first I wanted uh to talk about your bases now. Uh, from the information I had, um your first base you had uh first hit one you had a Rickenbacker. Uh four thousand one. That was that was the first base I ever bought. Now were you like a yes, like a Chris Squire fan, or were you like a, a Paul McCartney or who who was your or did it just happen that that's what you got? Why, well, you know, because um, that's a great base. I mean, <laughs> I think the reason, probably the guy that I saw playing one of those things that kind of made me want to get one was the dude in Atlanta Rhythm Section. There you go. You know, I had yep. This, yep. him and I mean, of course, Getty, but I, I, you <laughs> know, um, I was never a big Rush band, but it wasn't that. But I, I guess it was Leonard Rhythm Section, maybe. Okay. It, okay. it got me in. <laughs> I, sorry. I don't, sorry. It's as well as I can remember. It was hey, a long it time ago. <laughs> it could have been Lemmy. It could have been Lemmy before it had been Getty. Yeah. yeah right. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> then, um, so I guess that. after that, at one point, I guess you had uh, one of the Gibson, the Evo basses. Now that's the my dad bought me that bass. That was the first wow. bass. Now what year was that? That was I mean the bass. The bass I think was like a sixty eight. Also like a, like a cream style, yeah. Yeah, it was the cherry wood uh, yep. double cutaway thing. Wow. Looks like Angus Young's guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, it was probably a sixty eight. I think he got it for me in Gosh, I can't remember what year we bought that thing. We, it was like maybe 72. And it had been, he, my dad had every job in the world for a while. He worked at a music store in Conway for way back. And they had that bass in the showroom, is like in a case, in a glass case. And it had been there for like five or six years. Wow. It never, never sold it. It was brand new. <laughs> It was brand new when I got it, but it was like five years old. Wow. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was crazy. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. 
I had I had a story in my first Les Paul. I won't go into it. I don't want to get off. But I found this picture yesterday. So that's me and my grandmother. Oh, no. My first, my first the Les Paul uh. studio, an er, er, early, uh, I guess it was the early 90s Les Paul studio. And I lost it for 20 years. I had to sell it when I was short on cash, you know, and uh, yep. in college. And a buddy of mine, I found it online, and I thought I got it sniped out from under me on uh, Reverb. And my buddy brings me over to his house, and he opens the case. He goes, that's for you. And I started crying, uh, man. Oh, my God. Cool. I opened, because I, I knew the serial number. I opened the scratch plate, and I had carved my name in the back. I said, that's mine. Wow. You know? Oh, my God. That's crazy. So I got it back that's after cool. 20 years. So, so I know that feeling that, you know. <laughs> That's nuts, man. Super um, cool. Wow. So, so from there, I don't know where you went now. I found a picture of you and Max Warrior. It looked like you were playing a red P bass for a while. Yeah, I had a P bass there. I had a uh, one of those hammers that, uh, what's his face and Def Leppard had? Yep. The Explorer looking oh, yeah, body. Explorer type yeah. Thing, yeah. Yep. Uh, I had a 64 Thunderbird. Okay. I had a. I had a Steinberger copy, a Kramer, a headless oh, nice. thing. Wow. Oh, God. That sounded like crap. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it was like back then, I wish I had all those guitars, you know, still. But back then, dude, you were making, we were making nothing. You were making enough to eat. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted another guitar, you had to sell the one you had. Yeah. Or trade it in on the one. The, one you wanted right it ain't yeah. like you oh i want to buy that yeah and keep it with my other guitar uh, <laughs> no you always had one yeah so every time i find something else i wanted i'd have to freaking get rid of my other one I'm like this sucks but okay i'll grab that but that's the now, way it was back then now, don't, now break, you, don't you break a playing, string you know when you were playing back then or in your earlier days were you using now i noticed lately um on stage like uh they look at you at Ampeg, uh, like the eight by ten cabs. Were you using like uh, old SVTs back then, or what back kind of, in what kind of amps were you running through? Back in the eighties, yeah. Now I had a uh, some homemade stuff. Well, it wasn't homemade. It was made by a uh, this company in in Raleigh. It was built PAs. I can't remember the name of the place. They built me some custom cabinets. I had. Like these little low end, almost like a scoop, single 15 scoop thing. Okay. I had two of those and just two top boxes went on them and had a preamp and a regular like crown power amp. That's what I've used most of the time in Max Warrior. Oh, cool. Um, that uh, when I was in, when I got in the firehouse, I got a deal with uh Tube Works. You remember okay. that company? Yep. 100%. That, yep. They were, God, that was some good sounding stuff. And I had, I had eight cabinets, four, four lows, low end cabinets. I had double 15 cabinets for low end. So it was four of those and four, four tens at the top. Oh, nice. Four, uh, four amps in the freaking gigantic case, man. It was full of stuff. But uh, cool. that was a loud, loud rig, man. That sounded so good, though. Wow. Now, were those were those the ones that used the MOSFET, uh, MOSFET uh, power amps? Yeah. Yeah, I heard those are, the 500s. Everyone, everyone still looks for those, I heard. They're kind of like a hidden gem. People try and find them, I've heard. Yeah, and the preamps, too, were great. They had, yeah. like, little tube preamps, and they would, man, I wish I, yeah, I wish I had that stuff back. So... Um, so then, um, now, um, are you still using the PV amps now? Yeah. 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 Uh, I was looking PV at those. They were great. Is that based yeah. off of the BB three head? Is PV that what gave me a deal. It was, uh, the, the amps I'm using are the, what's it called? The micro minis. They're yep. a thousand watts a piece using oh, a couple the, of those. Uh, mini mega. Mini mega. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Mini mega. And, uh, the cabinets are 810 Michael Anthony cabinets. I saw the little great, yeah. Yeah, they just, you know, they sound a lot like the Ampeg 810. So, I mean, now, it's now do, you, have, do you ever 
do you ever use their 118s or split like their 410s or are you just doing the two straight 810s now just the two 810s is all yeah. i'm using yep. i mean i watched a couple four or five videos today uh within the last year you using that rig and man it's thunderous and the articulation on the low end is so it's 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 loud and thunderous as hell but it's not plubby it's tight that's, 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 really that's, that's that bass that bass i got is now it's the roscoe I, I i don't know why but it's the best sounding bass i have ever had in my life I, or wow. i've ever even heard i mean it's so and it was the first time they'd made that body style they started making a p bass body style you had roscoe yep Oh my God! I freaking I was when we were in the studio when we were recording. When I was recording the album with Striper, I plugged in. I got a pedal board with, you know, five or six things on there. But I plugged it in and I hit the first note, and the engineer stopped and turned around <laughs> and looked at me and said, "What on earth is that? <laughs> well, what you, kind of bass is that? It's Perry. It's <laughs> me. Like, That's just my hand." Exactly. He said, that was like freaking one of the best sounding basses he'd ever heard. I was like, and he hadn't even done anything yet. He hadn't even turned the knob yet. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, well, it's, a, it is so good. Aguilar pickups and uh, oh, yeah, just, Roscoe. man, that's so yeah. good. I can't say enough good stuff about Roscoe, man. I, I was the first guy Roscoe ever endorsed back in in eight, 89 or 90 when firehouse first got signed all those, those first videos with the white base and painted and they're all painted up with yep stuff on them those are roscoe's oh wow really? well, you know yeah i, I mean and, and i wasn't surprised but i was watching a quick you know stage blurb interview um i'm a big jimmy Haslam fan so they were asking him how did you get connected with roscoe and he mentioned you he said, I did my really? research. He said, I was a nerd. I found out Harry played them back in the day. And then I found it. He came back and he's playing them again now. And he goes, that dude rips. He was like, he goes, I might not play exactly the, you know, the type of music or the style he plays. You know, I might play different stuff. But he goes, that brother rips. And he goes, uh, when, I, when I knew he was using Roscoe. And like, to me, that was the biggest endorsement. I'm like, both of you guys using that brand is like, how could you, you hear either one of your names but both you using that brand it's I, like, I, you know. I know a lot a lot of they were they're big in the they were big in the jazz oh yeah music, right yeah and uh but i thought it was crazy um, he's a jazz guy but he knows how good of a player you are that's funny he's <laughs> you know. well i fooled, I fooled another one well, <laughs> no, you can, but man man you're, you're playing on that last that uh, newest album it's it's you that makes the sound, but man, like you're saying that bass, it's it's thunderous, man. And in those live things, I'm a guitar player. I normally listen for guitar, and and you know, I mean, uh, I sound a great, Michael sound a great live. They both sound a great live. Don't get me wrong, they didn't sound bad, but your bass is what I was hearing coming through. Oh, I wow. mean, That's oh, your tone is monstrous. Like, yeah, it's absolutely just, monstrous. Just, just so, slamming it. So like I, I have to keep the. Uh, like slipping the sound man of 20 every now and then to turn it up. <laughs> That's one thing, boy, in, in country, it didn't get turned up. I was up there. I had two Ampeg 810s on stage. Okay. And and I had had, I would be, the amp would be on like a half. Okay. I mean, you couldn't even hardly hear. I put my ear to it. And he's like, turn the bass down. I was like, dude. <laughs> Freaking can't even hear. I got my head to it. I can't hear. No. Like, why have I even got these amps up here? I was like, I just ended up just taking them off and not even using amps, just wow. plugging straight in. I was like, were you, were you guys on monitors or were you on in ears on the on Trace or on Craig's gig? Craig, Craig and Trace were on in ear in okay. ears. So, yeah. so I'm curious. Um, a college buddy of mine is a guitar player, RJ Ronquillo, and I know he played with uh, Thompson Square for a couple of years. And he said, every country gig, he swear it's all in years. And he said, the problem is if you're coming from being a rock guy, which he was, he goes, takes so much time to get used to it. Now, I don't know for you, you've been on the road for 30 years. So I don't know if you have the same thing of getting used to in ears or maybe you uh, already had a ton of experience. Dude, I hate it. I hate yeah. him. I got, I, 
Everybody in Striper uses them except me. I, okay. I, I'm like, I'd rather not hear the vocal. Okay. And just be able to feel it. I can't, right. I feel too isolated with those things on. I, I can't hear the live drum sound. You know, everything's like I'm in the studio and I can't freaking get into it. And, <laughs> And if I move my head, they unseal. And ever I open my mouth to sing, they break the seal. And it's just, I can't, I don't like them at all. So um, now if you're in just, like the thing we did in this, the video thing we did, the Stripers live video thing we did, I'd use them in there in the studio when we were playing. But I mean, you'd have to in there. But it's as far as doing live shows, I don't use them anymore. Yeah. Yeah, kind of country. That was the the hardest thing for me to get used to was that. Yeah, yeah, that is a, that is a wild thing. And I just just one more thing I wanted to hit, not necessarily like gear wise, but I know um, it had listed um, through the Striper webpage. Anyway, are you still um, working or using the uh, Go Go pedal tuners? The, yeah, Go Go. Yeah, yeah. Like they changed, I thought that was the coolest thing because dark stage like you guys are obviously working on like i guess country you have might have more light but with striper you're probably sometimes in complete darkness but yeah. if you want to explain it, you probably know it better than me but how it changes color on the whole thing and you know you're you're right in there i thought that was the coolest thing and it's huge it's huge the screen on that thing's huge the, yeah the whole and thing i can't have i can't have c right you guys look <laughs> like little blurry people <laughs> <laughs> get far, far enough away far enough away from it i can tell you know okay it, since it's that big i can okay that's an a i can kind of see that so i had to get a big one and he custom built those for us man and painted them yellow and black for us and, i thought that was the coolest thing like yeah mike from gogo is a super guy and he's a freaking killer musician too I've check heard out that. some yeah he's great so. I was watching a demo and they were like the demo and he goes, yeah. And he, some guy in the background was like, yeah, and he builds them too. And he's just ripping away. I'm like, wow. Yeah. But I always yeah. thought if, if, if the guy or girl who builds the stuff is a musician themselves, the product always ends up being better. Right. Because they know what a musician wants. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, yeah. And then I saw you were using some of the Warren star, the stage gear. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, there, man. Like, and, yeah, I started and, wearing and their breath of stuff. Their catalog's huge. Yeah, I started wearing that, and I was wearing that with Craig. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I got the got the sponsors sponsored by them when I was with Craig, and uh, um, it just kind of carried over into the striker thing. So. Well, I mean, I saw like all your promo stuff, and I was like, yeah, it, it looks like <laughs> a <Yeah. rock> gig. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, they've done it. They've done some good stuff for us, and it's hard, you know, trying to keep that yellow and black theme. Yep. And it's it's hard to do a lot of different stuff with that, you know. Well, I always so. loved it, and you know, I went to school out in Pittsburgh, so you know, big uh, big Pittsburgh, big Steelers fan. So you go. always, you know, that black and yellow for me, man. Since I was younger, my family's all from Western PA, so. Dude, it's so funny because that's always been my favorite colors. Oh yeah, yellow, yellow and black, like. Uh, I mean, my my car is yellow and black. My my house is totally black, right? Well, when I saw okay. the Transformer movie, they did the uh, Bumblebee movie. I was like, yeah. yeah. I, like, I have a I have a totally black house with a yellow door. Nice. Excellent. So, well, I was going to say, and the HOA people, hates me. But. That's <laughs> a topic, but your your gray, white, and black like in your room there is just spot on like because i want i'm re uh, i'm waiting to oh, yeah. in my room i haven't that's why everything's everywhere and i love your colors man it's like yeah i've i've, I've uh i did the design on this house myself and uh, tried to draw it up by hand before nice. i gave it to an architect to actually draw plans up for it but i yeah i designed this place myself and it was uh it's unusual we get people stopping Riding by about every well, you, couple you of definitely days, have an artist eye for it, though. I mean, like even your floor, yeah. you tied the whole thing with your floor. I mean, were you not a great, you know, musician and bassist? I'm sure you could have a fourth or fifth career as a <laughs> interior designer as well. Right? Yeah, I did. Maybe I'll try that. I mean, there you go. But I mean, I mean, I love everything you do. And, and, you know, I know, I know, we're on a time limit. Uh, I don't want to uh, use up too much of your time before we go on to the next gentleman. But I just want to say. 
I, I, I'm not a really religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person. And you give off just the energy and the aura of like 1000% positivity. Uh, you know, oh, thanks, man. You, Oh, I'm the same way. I mean, in in your smile, it comes up in your eyes, man. Like that, that spirit, you've got like that, that energy, that, that, you know, that, that core spirit of life is just exuded. It's coming out of you, man. I'm picking up on that vibe and thank thank you you for that energy, man. Cause it's, it's all positive, man. It's all love. I feel feel that coming off you, man. Thank you. That's nice of you to say. I mean, thank you very much. I try, try to, you know, uh, do unto others. That was, my, you know, my title for that song. And one hundred percent, man. Uh, I, that's what I try to live by. So yeah, there's there's enough negativity in the world that you got to have. You know, you need positiveness. You need smiles. You need fun. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely true. Before we get into some striper questions, let's bring up. Let me pull it up here. Uh, where is it at? Let's bring up. Let's bring up this right here. Man, that looks so awesome. Dude. So we've got the fan club and membership. And there are your levels of membership. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so get in there and sign up, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been pushing the Patreon thing a lot for this year since we haven't been able to play, um, and we've got a lot. Oh, so many people have signed up for it, and we're so appreciative. And they kept us going. I mean, it's helping to to pay our the bills that we have, even when we're not on the road. We, you know, office office stuff and paying people to run this and that but it helps pay that stuff while we're not playing and uh the uh and they the pay, patreon is really cool man I, I actually had joined patreon with a couple of uh i had a couple of podcasts that i listened to it's like mm-hmm. a patreon stuff at the end that only sure. patreon members can hear and i got into it that way and so we give them a lot of stuff that nobody else can see from videos and pictures. And we get on once a week and have a uh, question and answer thing where they can ask us anything they want. And that's cool. It's cool, man. It's a cool setup. And we're going to start doing the question and answer thing video. Oh, cool. Like, like I'll be on video answering chat thing that's coming oh, up. Cool. So that's, oh, yeah, wow. that's going to be cool. I'm going to try awesome. that next week. That's a good through crowd something i forget the name of it but um yeah the 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 patreon thing super cool so if you guys are interested please uh look that up and and get on there there's three yeah there's like three different levels it's not that much your tour manager and your media people are killing it man because so many bands get weak on their social media yours is like insanely good always new videos new information up-to-date information, changes on tours. Like, I wish everyone would follow your model. <laughs> well, they do a great job. And uh, not, probably one thing that helps is my wife actually works for Striper, too. So <laughs> she, well, you, yeah, she can, she's doing it for, the, you know, keeping my best interest at heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, awesome. yeah, yeah, the whole team is freaking great. I mean, I, and to love all of them. And the guys in the band, I, I just – I can't believe that I walked into this situation and it's with people that are this nice. I mean, I know there are a Christian band and all, but I've met some really mean Christians in my life. Right. <laughs> these, these guys. Yeah. I, I grew the, up yeah. yeah. I mean, these guys are some of the best people I've ever met and just love them to death. And they brought me in and I feel a part of something again. You don't feel that in Nashville. You don't feel that in country at all. You're you're a hired gun. You do your job or get fired, right? Mm-hmm. With this, you're like you're you're embraced as a, being a family member, and that's what I missed about playing. I mean, I had fun in Nashville, but I missed that being a part of the band and 
having a say so in what goes on and you know you're mad you matter you don't it isn't like you just you know yeah just play it you know it, it means a lot and it, it shows in the music you know yeah because yeah. you feel you like you're part like, of yeah, something it yeah. does yes you guys look like you're having a blast on stage too and that projects to the audience you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it it's it's fun again to play. I'm ready. I'm ready, it, I'm ready it, it for the tour. Fun. Like it looks fun watching it. <laughs> it, it is. I mean, look over. I mean, there's two of the best guitar players. Oh yeah. In the world, and they're oh, in the same terrible. band, and I'm standing there beside them playing. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> you guys are so talented, man. And and Robert is just, I mean, just crazy drummer. I mean, it, it was. Night and day. That's the one thing that took me a while to to lock in with him because he's such a different style drummer than Foster was with Firehouse. Foster is like a just steady freaking kills the drums, but you know it's like a Bonham type thing. Yeah, Robert's just all freaking over the place, man. It's like <laughs> you, you've got to start yeah. thinking like yeah. he does to get yeah. in the pocket with him, and it once you get there, it's great. And it, it was a uh, God. It, it feels so good now to play. I, I miss playing. It's been a year, yeah. year and four months since yeah. we did a live show, and we got to go up and record those two albums live in the studio last month. And that was God. It felt so good just to get in there and play again, even if it wasn't to an audience of just the. There's somebody beside me playing, you know. Like, yeah, wow. right. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. All right, Charles. Perry, you know, you just answered two of the questions <laughs> I was going to ask you. Oh, boy. That's I'm awesome. <laughs> I was going to ask you how COVID affected the band and what it's been like not playing for a year and a half. Yeah. I've been a fan of yours for 30 years, okay? I've wow. been a fan of Striper for 30 years. Those Both bands have this massive longevity. But I want to know, it's 2017, you've been from Craig, from Craig's band to Trace's band and back. Where were you and what was going through your mind when you got the call from Striper? <laughs> okay, and, I'll, and, and, was there any sigh of relief to get back into metal from country because from where you came from, brother, you had to be dying to go back. You don't even know, man. It was, uh, I was uh, getting ready to tee off. I was playing golf that morning. We were on the road with, with, with uh, Craig. And uh, I was getting ready to tee off on the first hole. And the phone rang. I was like, oh, boy, hold on. And I saw it was... I go, God. So they said they'd caught, I would already gone out and auditioned, and they said they'd let me know in a you know, day or two whether or not, you know, they had this other guy in mind and they didn't know yet. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know. I answered the phone. And it was like, the, the job's yours if you want it, man. It's like, you were the, you're the only person. We didn't even talk to anybody else. We knew when you walked in the room, you were the guy. I was like, this, yeah. You know, I was like, I I couldn't even play That's, golf that. Did, did, you, did you finish? I the, think I shot finish? like a one twenty. <laughs> <That's laughs> awesome. finished, but I was, I couldn't hit the ball. I was shaking. I, mean, I would have you know, took the awesome. cart and said, "I got to go, guys. I'll take it to cart." <laughs> <laughs> See you. So, yeah, to get, I mean, I was. It was perfect timing for me because I was to the point. I was fed up with Nashville and I didn't want to be there anymore. And I decided I was going to move back home to Myrtle beach. And, uh, I wanted to spend more time with my sister and cousins and all was still here. And so I'd already made up my mind. I was going to do it. I just didn't know when. And, uh, and this fell in my lap and it was perfect time because I could live anywhere. It didn't matter. Everybody lives everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, it was, I couldn't believe how great it was, how perfect it was. Time you are wise, an absolutely perfect fit for Striper. <laughs> oh. Perfect fit. I've, I've been 
you know, catching up for this show. I've been watching a lot of Striper lately. And uh, yeah. my favorite Striper song is Make Love Great Again. Oh, really? This last I album. I love that too, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to hear your new album. I can't wait. Yeah. We, <laughs> we're going to probably start working on another one in January. Yeah. So. Yep. It's just a shame yeah. that we didn't get the tour on this one, man. Well, it's, I think it's one of the best records that they ever did. And yeah, you know, and God, there's some great songs on there. And they're all good. There's not, there's not a bad song <laughs> on the album, um, but just yeah. to stick out, you know, and touch you a certain way. And that's totally cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. So All we'll get right. to do a couple of them on. We, we're, we've got a few shows coming up that, before the end of the year. So uh, at least we'll get to play a couple of those live, I hope. You know, you guys are so international. South Korea, Indonesia. Yeah. Would you, let, yeah. Which band, let me ask you this question. Which band have you toured the most international with? What was the more international band? Because you guys went everywhere. Uh, with Firehouse, you guys were with Firehouse. With, uh, probably, good, probably with Firehouse because really, we, we did. We had, I think it was gold. We our, that album, first album, went gold in like twelve different countries yes. in Asia, in Asia yeah. alone. From yeah, so we toured all those, like you know, from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Taiwan, Thailand, you name it. I mean, we were all all over that place. It was great. And uh, we did South Korea. We did Europe. Um, which uh, so which was, international country was the hardest for you to play at? Had the most restrictions, things of that nature. Uh, Malaysia. Malaysia, really? Yeah, really. Yeah, they're 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 the. Um, I think they have the. It's them or Indonesia. I might be. It's one of the two. That's the largest mm -hmm. Muslim popula population. Mm -hmm. And uh, it they they I had to wear if like if we went on TV and did a show or if we did an interview, mm -hmm. I had to wear a long sleeve, oh, no shirt, tattoos, no, no tattoos. tattoos. Yeah. Wow. They wanted me to pull my hair back. Um, it was strange. I mean, you kids are going to see you live and they're going crazy. Right. Sure. Like, why you care what it looks like on TV? They already know what it looked like. Yeah. It's a good but, thing you didn't get that face tattoo then, right? Right. <laughs> so that was that was that was probably the 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 that in Indonesia was probably Malaysia. I think was worse in Indonesia though. So wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. you guys have been all over the world. You you got a just an incredible career, Perry. Absolutely, and I'm going to say it. In 1990s, you had the best hair of any metal player, period, dude. Period. Wow, thanks. I'm still hey, rocking it, brother. Hey, I, lost Charles, my I still Charles, got some. I can't you're doing that. good, man. You're doing good. I want to see it. Not as, it's not oh, as yeah, good as Mitch it. Malloy's hair, but, you know, at least I got <laughs> some. Let's give that pick away. Let's yeah. give this Perry uh, Richardson guitar pick away. I want to see that pick. Please yeah. Stay. Yeah, All right. Man. Can we see that pick? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Let's show everybody what we're playing for here. And you we'll know, Perry, uh, Tony knew Perry, he thought ahead. He made his own if, uh, logo the same yeah. color. See, it's yellow yeah. with a black. Yeah. He knew ahead of time. Yeah. Wow. We'll, oh, we'll have to see if Perry knows the answer to the trivia question. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perry, a hard one. Perry, we've never had this happen. Perry, you cannot win your own pick, sir. Yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to answer. But okay, that's what <laughs> we're playing we, for we right there. You probably had one before, so you're probably not that excited. But I think he's got a few of those. Probably, I don't They're know just if I got any of those left or not. I don't know. <laughs> there might be one around here somewhere. You my striker picks are the exact same pick, though. Oh wow! There you you've go. used one of those once or twice, I'm sure, before. Yeah. <laughs> excellent excellent all right kids here we go you know the drill we're going to ask one question Good um, luck, if you are the answer there's a email if you're the winner there's an email address down below where it says merch 
email me your name and address. I will mail you this firehouse Perry Richardson guitar pick out Monday morning. Good luck Good to luck everybody. Tom. The first and first correct answer we see will be our winner. Not a difficult question here tonight. Um, nice vintage firehouse guitar pick for you kids. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Get ready to type. Good luck, guys. Good luck, everybody. All right. Firehouse had two top ten singles in the U.S. Name one of them. <laughs> Name one of them. No, nope, it's not Metalhead Hippie. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> There's a little delay in. Delay should be right about now. Yeah, All right, there. the answers are coming in. Don't treat me bad. Love of a lifetime, Mike. Oh, where is it at? See, I see Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson, love of a lifetime. Johnson. There he is. Mike, dude. Very cool, bro. Mike. Yay. You Very are cool, our winner. Dude. Mike Johnson. <clears throat> All right. Nice Congratulations, job. Mike. Let me let me um the answers are Love Lifetime number three and ninety one when I look in your eyes. Off the sophomore record number eight in 1992. Mm -hmm. Both mm -hmm. awesome albums. Love it. Oh, yeah. Those were the days. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got, a, I got a trivia question for you. All uh -oh. right. <clears throat> and let's see. In what country, during, during Firehouse, in what country did a local crew guy that was setting up our show got, got eaten by a tiger? What? No way. <laughs> wow. Um, Nepal? Which country, huh? Nepal? <laughs> I'm trying to think where tigers are. That's what I'm doing. That's uh, exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be stupid and say USA. It was it a I was going to say the I don't know. <laughs> jungles of Brazil. I don't know. No, I want to no. say like either India or like China. It was Indonesia. 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 Wow. Okay. Really? Yeah. Was that a, a yeah. Bengal tiger there? You got eaten by a tiger? Yeah. Well, it was a terrible oh. story, but it's crazy. Wow. It's one of the craziest things I can ever think of that happened, happened a lot more than wow. at, a show, at a show. When we got there, nobody set anything up yet, and everybody's moping around. They're like, what happened? What's going on? Yeah. So and so got drug into the woods and eaten by, half eaten by a tiger. I was like, oh. Cow. And we got to play here. Oh, we were playing God. outside. Wow. Oh, man. Like, oh, my Lord. Wow. Talk about the heavy vibes in the air, right? Wow. Oh, that was terrible. Wow. Goodness. I mean, that'd be like no more outdoor shows. I, I mean, apparently, apparently, it happened a lot, though. I saw a video. This woman got out. They said, do not get out of your cars. You could drive through. And she got out to try and take a picture of one. And, like, uh, I mean, I guess that's the way large cats are. You know, the wild they're, all, they're that, always that, so hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they say that even a house cat has the same mentality. No, I mean, truthfully, it's just well, they tear so, you up, they're, man. They're, seriously, a they're so small, and that's up. the only reason why. But if yeah. you've seen recently, there was one trying to tear a guy up, and like I think he had like thirty some stitches. Yeah, could but you, you imagine? Dying? I mean, as bad as a house cat could tear you up, what a could oh. three or four hundred pound cat would do you don't have a chance yeah no, there's no no, chance. No. No. i can't imagine that. you know i i, no. I was attacked by a dog and had my hand torn up i oh. i would pick a dog anytime over a cat <laughs> over oh a tiger? yeah oh <laughs> well i, I would take a dog i would take a dog even over a small cat that doesn't over a small a yeah they're pretty nasty. Oh. seriously yeah, more well i mean you know more more yeah anyway <laughs> yeah the worst scar i got on my body is like there's this scar right here on my hand that was from a cat. Yeah. It, like, it. It, it clawed me right there and I went to yank my hand away and I picked the whole cat up yeah. with oh, one yeah. claw right there and it went to my hand Oof. open. I was like, ah. <laughs> but, 
That was, so I, I, I don't want to gross anyone out. I'll give you a quick one though. My scariest Bernese mountain dog bit me right here. Uh, 140 <laughs> pound dog. Yeah, they're big. He didn't let go, but he just went and like 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 the Star Trek thing. That's all my whole hand was. Oh uh, crap! Thankfully though, thankfully it was on my picking hand, so. Yeah. The, I have nerve damage the whole way in my arm, but it's not on the Freddy hand. So. Wow. Oh, God. Oh. Dude. Dude. Let, me, let me ask you this, Perry, and we're approaching the hour mark. All right. Um, I know you got to run. I, I'm curious to know the tale behind this motorcycle right there. Nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome. It's short. Uh, that uh, it is a gr uh, a story behind that bike that will rip your heart out. And uh, um, John John Black he built that bike. Uh, he, was a, he was a big Striper fan, and he he had a little his baby. I think she was a year old that died, yeah. and uh, he needed something to get his mind off of it, and. Uh, he built that bike from scratch and he'd never done anything like that before. Wow. And, and it kind of, and it, uh, it, it helped him. He wrote, he wrote the most touching thing I think I've ever read. It was just his, pretty much his story is a couple of pages long. And I was sitting there reading it crying like a baby. Right. And, uh, it, it was amazing. It's like, dude, you need to, we need to publish this or something. It's such, such a great story such so heartwarming and what it did to his life and how he fought through the pain and all that and striper helped him with that and building that bike helped him but anyway i saw it online one one day he said look what i pulled out of my garage it was on facebook he said i hadn't seen this bike in a year and i was like i got on it was like immediately like i want that bike <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> so he and so I got it from him. I mean, he almost, gave, he almost gave it to me. It was wow. ridiculous. It was so cheap. And uh, I just had a little bit of work done on it. And I put some new carburetors on it. And thing runs like a charm, man. It's so cool. That's, and, uh, that's that's awesome. awesome. And it's got a lot of meaning. I mean, he took the, the rear end of where the seat is, is a, the rear end of the bike. He took that off and took it to uh, a striper show before I was in the band years ago and all everybody signed it nice. and it, it's still on there man it's wow. like a such that's a cool such a cool uh, piece of but did you sign it once you got it back once you owned it no <laughs> i'm not <laughs> i'm not you, touching you it. it original that's that, yeah, it's that's original. Same thing. leave it original yep. yeah that's, that's, that's excellent yeah excellent story man but that means no, so man. much more the the story the provenance this, the fact I, the, I said the story like, is just amazing. I, I mean, yeah. I'm a big Hendrix nut, and that's the only reason why I bought a 69 Strat. I traded up to it. I don't think yeah. it sounds better. And a custom shop one that's brand new might even play better, but I love right. the story behind it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. That's very yeah. cool. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, <laughs> Perry. We appreciate you being here. This has been such a treat. Thank My you friend. so much, Perry. Yeah. Thank you, Can't thank you enough. You're welcome, guys. I mean, th thank you. I mean, you guys, I can tell what nice guys you are and you're passionate about your music and all. And that's what keeps us going. So we, I, I want to thank you. You know, it's been a really great time. I, you know. Uh, that's almost past my bedtime now. I'm I know, like, you you <laughs> made my Saturday night for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I've had a great time, guys. Really. Can't, so, can't wait for the tour. Can't awesome. wait. For the yes. Hundred percent. Yes. We'll be out there in full force to support. Yes. Absolutely. And everybody, Striper's link is down in the description. Yo, know, click that um, link. Sign up for Patreon. Support check the out band. the Patreon. Yep. Yeah. A lot of cool yeah. Stuff in there too. yeah. 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 It'll just be getting better and better too. So we're working oh, on yeah. that. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All so right, fun. Perry. We Thank appreciate you, Perry. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again. This has been so much fun. You're I'm welcome. such a I'm such I've been a fan since way back in the club days. Um absolutely. 
Oh, thank you, brother. Makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, All right, Perry. Ladies Rock and down. gentlemen, Mr. <laughs> Perry Richardson. Rock out, Perry. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, guys. Have, Have a, a good, good night. Evening. Be good, bro. Good night. Good night. All right. Peace. Hey, this Charles. Hey, Charles. I didn't do it. <laughs> hey, Charles. All right. Man. Wow. Man, what a gentleman. Fantastic. Yeah. So, what a great guy, man. Wow. Such a great guy. Tom, you nailed it with the energy. Definitely. The, oh, you, know, okay. you, you could tell right away. You know, I, I felt like I was too overbearing, so that's good to hear. No, no, because you know it's it's true. When you see, you know, when you see somebody, yeah, you he, got there. Was, you got some unboxings. Too? I was we got a like, couple. We got a couple unboxings. Oh, I was trying to talk less, but he just had so much positive energy. It was it was awesome. I just, man. It, was, it made me feel excited. You know, <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> that's great. All right, so let's. Let's first. Before, I've got a couple unboxings. Cool. Wow. Here, let me get my screen straight. How about that? There, yeah. there you go. All right. So first of all, you got that Thunderbird base behind you, don't you? We got more picks. <laughs> Nice. Cool. That's a nice oh, pick. Oh. That is. Is that Mike's, uh, Michael Sweet? Michael Sweet. Yeah. My voice what, cut out right when I started to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like this. It's hit or miss. Yeah. I like that. Oh, I well, love monsters any, of, any of the monsters of rock. I love. So cool. Yeah. I got a few striper picks here. Yep. Um, oh, I like that too. That is cool. Yeah. That's, that's nice. from the Monsters of Rock Cruise in 13. All right, where are we at here? Let's see. How about one? Oz Fox right there. There you go. Yeah. All right. Michael Sweet from the Monsters Cruise. And these others are from the monsters. Here's a, a dark colored Oz box. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you this one. Oh, that's a great pick right there. Yeah. All right. So. Let me get out of this screen. I'm going to go right back to this screen. We have Cool. You're muted there, Tony. That mic's muted. Nope. How about now? You good. All right. The Chad. Excellent. Sent something in the mail. Awesome dude. Let's see what Chad sent. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. So, goodies, goodies, goodies. Let's change the, let's change. Hmm. Whoa. You buy, nice. 
Oh, wow. Oh, that's a nice pick. Flip of the tongue. Oh. Uh, and another Steve. Uh. Oh, little Stevie Pie. Those are cool, man. And still yet mm. another wow. white snake. Dude. Chad, and cool. another white snake. Let's see what else. Oh, here's one. Check this out. Oh man. Let's see. Green green's my favorite color. Oh that's dude, nice. that's the best one. That is cool. Nice. Yeah, dude, uh, that's so cool. Nice, Chad. Cool, man, very cool. Awesome, and another pink white snake. Wow. Right there. That's a nice haul. Awesome, Chad. Very cool, Chad. You're muted again. You did, Tony. You did, Tony. Switch him up. How about now? You and good? Good. And he's back. It's not muted. muted. Now you're good. All right. You are good. Another one. Yeah. You get all kinds of stuff. I got a bunch tomorrow on the Van Halen show. Nice. A bunch and, and some cool stuff tomorrow. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this, if I can get it open and get it out of here. Guy wrapped this thing up good. <laughs> Holy moly! I didn't know it was going to be a unboxing on the show. All right. Uh oh, he's got the pen out. Don't write on yourself. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. <laughs> I'm trying to get this <laughs> tape off of here. And exactly. we got it. <clears throat> here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, good Let's see if there's any other goodies in here that I don't know about, and there's not. <laughs> Made that mistake before. Yeah. Did you get the guitar picks I chunked in there, too? <laughs> no. Garbage man came yesterday, too. Oh, man. All right. Dude. Oh, oh, Steve Lynch. Steve, Steve Lynch. Sorry, what did I say? Steve, I, I meant Steve Lynch. <laughs> nice. Wrong, wrong Steve. Steve so Lynch. So Autograph. Great, man. So many good Steve guitar players, I get confused sometimes. Oh, yeah. And authenticity. Very cool. Yeah. Excellent. Love Excellent. autograph. So this will go nicely Beautiful. on the wall. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, good, good. Good, good. Yeah. All right. Okay. That was fun, guys. It certainly was. That was fun. Absolutely. Yes, that was fun. Um, yeah, goodness. What's up, Zach? Zach, what's going on, bro? <clears throat> um, yeah, I've, I've been a 
fan of that guy for for many years before they got signed in 90 um he was in bands around here max warrior nantucket big rock scene here in north carolina in the 80s and and we we really watched that band happen watch the hype watch the record come out as everyone else did after it it did but we were here and watched it all go down um yeah that's awesome yeah so glad that that's he's still playing you know such a long career and he's still going just yeah. awesome you know yeah 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 and he's in a band now that is not going anywhere they have a huge following that's right um, right yeah they'll be around for a long time yeah not, not going away nope so we are yes so they've got dates booked looks like starting in september yeah, there's a couple i'll have to tell sandra because i think they, they're starting out in wisconsin yeah i like. saw that so, i saw only got that a, only got a couple of dates i hope they play i'm sure they'll play everywhere but um they've been they've been in my town a few times so my, my wife my wife reminded me that uh when when we were dating i couldn't go she went to see striper locally in like 88 or 89 and i couldn't go i was either working or something like that she goes i'm not going to go by myself i go it's a christian band you're not going to get hurt it'll be fine you know so, <laughs> so yeah. she had a good time she had a good time but she still she still bugs me about that you didn't go with me I said, all right i'll go next time so that's now a, you know so now i'll go this time you know but yeah it was funny all right um okay so announcements let's see what we got all right for those of you i haven't gotten that stuff loaded in yet for next week's show but next week on show mm. your pick I don't have those cards loaded in. I, I've got all the the ads ready. But next week, right here on Show Me Your Pick, we're going to be spotlighting Quiet Riot. Nice. nice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's going to be fun. That'll be and fun. for those of you Van Halen fans, tomorrow night... 10 p.m. Eastern, right here, Halenville Live. We're going to draw comparisons to the 1986 albums Eat 'em and Smile and 5150. Cool. So, um, yeah. So, not sure who, who's going to be on board a couple of you guys and others It'll be a lot of fun 10 p.m eastern tomorrow night right here for all things van halen um cool. guys this has been fun tonight i've had yeah. such a wonderful time great yes. time Mr. Chat, love Charles. you guys, man. Love the chat. You guys are awesome. Brandon, Tom. Thanks, Tony. Always See you a guys pleasure. later, Brandon, Tom. <laughs> Always a pleasure. We will see you guys right back here next week, 9 p.m. Eastern. Show me your pick. Quiet Riot. Everybody have a great weekend. Congratulations again, Mike Johnson. Yep, Mike yeah, Johnson. Mike rock, dude. Email me your, I think, has Mike won here before? I'm not sure. I don't know for I sure. I'm going to look know. through the, that e email and say, Mike, if you're still listening, e email me your stuff. 
just in case. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. And thanks to everybody for being yep. here. We love you. We appreciate well, you. Guys. Well, on, man. Have yep. a good weekend. See ya. Have a good one. Take care. Jenkins.